brought back all the stuff that I had collected over the years, years and years and years, and brought it back to my place. And I didn't realize how much sentimental items I had. And now they were all in front of me and I had to sort through it. I mean, I don't know what the right number is for the amount of sentimental items one person can have, but I knew that I had way too many. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sudarshi and on this channel I talk about intentional living, global learning, and culture. I've been trying to be as minimal as possible so there isn't a whole bunch of clutter and stuff lying around in the house that provides no value to me. And so I really thought it was important to go through my sentimental items and really bring it down to the things that matter the most and not have all of this excess stuff just existing in my space. You name it, I probably kept it because it reminded me of some memory with some person and it could have been like, a literally I had pieces of tissue in there. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. It's weird. So now I was left with this task of cleaning up all of this stuff and decluttering it. Okay, so just so you know, it's gonna get messier before it gets any cleaner. So let me show you what the situation is. So I'm trying to kind of separate the um, non-memory box sentimental items to keep that separate. So we're only dealing with the memory box stuff now. Um, so I have all the books and stuff that I'm not gonna be throwing away here in a basket. And then everything else that I have to organize is all here. And I've got my garbage bin and my donate bin over there. And then another situation down there, which I'll deal with later. So I turned to one of my greatest friends, um, the internet and I researched some ways on how best to declutter your sentimental items. After the research that I did, I narrowed it down to the top five tips that worked for me. And that's what I wanna share with you guys in the hopes that hopefully this will help you clean up your stuff as well, specifically your sentimental item. These tips were really helpful to me because I think if I didn't have them, I would have just kept everything because I would have somehow justified it in my head that I needed every single thing here and somehow every single thing there was going to bring me happiness. And these tips really helped me figure out what was actually valuable versus what was just delusion. So I have these stuffed animals. I don't know what to do with them, but I don't want to throw them away. This is Monty. He's named uh, Monty because I got him when I was in Montreal. This is my first stuffed animal. She glows in the dark. And this is a bear from Sri Lankan Airlines when we went to Sri Lanka. And I have all these shot glasses from when I, I just collected it from my travels and then I stopped collecting them, so now I'm just happy. I also have this bear. It's like this September sapphire bear that I got when I went on an overnight trip in grade 8 to Wilfrid Laurier University. So I kind of don't want to throw this up either. Let's start with tip number one. So the first thing that I did was I would ask myself, okay, what memory does this item recall? Why am I keeping this item? Does it spark any sort of feeling? And if you guys all know Marie Kondo, she asks when we are decluttering like her closets and things like that, or our homes, does it spark joy? That's like the, the infamous line, does it spark joy? And I mean, the reason it's infamous is because it's true. We should ask ourselves that, does it spark joy? Or at least what feeling does it spark? And if it's a, uh, a good feeling, then that's great. If it's a negative feeling, then it's really questionable as to why you still are holding on to that item. And then the last thing that I was asking myself is, do I physically need this item to give me that feeling that it sparks? And if yes, then I'll hang on to it. And if no, then maybe it's time for the item to go. Tip number two is to make use of it. There were a lot of items that I had that I would just have safely stored away because it was so sentimental and I didn't want anything to happen to it. But really, what's the point in that? If there's an item that's so valuable to us, we should make use of it in our lives. And so that's something that I started to do with some of my items. I thought to myself, how can I incorporate this in my life? Can I put it somewhere in my house? Can I use it in my daily activities? 
Can I maybe repurpose it into something that I am gonna use? Tip number three, donate it. There were some items that I found that I thought, you know what? I don't think this is as valuable to me as it could be for someone else. And some of the items, I actually immediately thought of specific people that I could give those items to, and it would bring them so much more value and happiness in their hands than in mine. Tip number four, take a picture of it. This is probably the tip that I use the most because it was physically just taking up too much space. So for certain things that I didn't physically need with me, I took a picture of it and I downloaded an app called something scan. It's like a app where you can scan things and it does a pretty good job of it. So you just take a picture and it's almost like you scanned it with your computer and then you have that item on your phone in a digital copy forever. Tip number five. How would you feel if the item that you're looking at wasn't there the next time you took a look at your memory box? So for this tip, I would really look at the item and just think about, you know, if this wasn't here the next time around, would I care? And if the answer was no, then it would be gone. Three, so this is the current state of the decluttering situation. This is trash, not trash, just to figure out where this goes, but it's not staying with me. This, all the stuff I'm keeping, all the stuff has to be sorted through, and I'll be keeping it. This will be the final, the final memory box. And this is also all trash. So I have to go through each one of these things to figure out what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. I was thinking of putting it all in here, but this box is already full, as you can see. And then there's like tons of photos and stuff over here that I have to go through. All of the cards I've pretty much ever received are in here. So after using these tips, I finally made it down to one pretty big box of all of my sentimental items, uh, which I call my memory box. And I know for a lot of people that might still be too big for me. It's the best that I can do for now. And I'll probably have a few iterations of this and try to size it down to something a little bit smaller. But for now, this will have to do. We're done. The memory box has been created and the sentimental items have been decluttered. And now the room is clean. This is my sewing station. There's lots of room now. Bed doesn't have stuff on it. There's a workstation over here, which is great. And then the box is right here stored away in the closet. Right down there, that last box. And everything's in there and it feels really good. Sometimes sentimental items are great because of the joy that it brings us. But can sentimental items also be doing us a disservice by cluttering our homes, cluttering our minds, and just filling up our space for no reason when they provide no value? I hope you found these tips valuable and you can just get started on decluttering your sentimental items and your memory box as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have a comment, feel free to comment below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.